Good morning. You are welcome to the Church of St. Patrick's, Castletown. As we receive the remains of the late Monica Thai, we come to pray for her, her family, and speed her on the way back to her Creator. The creator she was so faithful to during her life, through her religious observances, through her devotions, through her regularity in attending church, both herself and her late husband. That faith is represented by the symbols which we place on the coffin. Symbols of the Bible and of the crucifix. The Bible representing the word of God which guided her path through life. The crucifix reminding us of the resurrection that she shares in following her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are the Christian symbols which represented a very important aspect of the late Monica's life. So I will now invite Lindsay Carlin to kindly come forward as we have some symbols of her working life, symbols reminding us of her activities and the engagements of her life, and they will be explained to us by Lindsay. Okay, Lindsay. Alex is carrying a rose to symbolize Monica's love for her garden. She took great pride in the beauty of her garden, and she has passed this love on to her children. Karen is carrying a postwoman's hat, a symbol of Monica's work life. Monica followed in her father Michael's footsteps, working for On Post. Her friendly manner on the job meant that many of the people she met in her work life turned into lifelong friends. Aidan is carrying a photo frame of Monica's five grandchildren. Monica was very family orientated and was happiest when her grandchildren came to visit. I wish to extend my sympathy, the sympathy of the parish priest, Father Martin, to all of you, but in particular to Monica's children, Declan, Anthony, Pamela and Avril, to her 
sons-in-law Stephen and daughter-in-law Gronya. Also to her grandchildren, Aidan, Alex, Karen, Freddie, Max. I extend our sympathy to her sisters, Maeve, and brothers, Earl, Mickey, Phil, Raymond, Greg, Alan, to her sister-in-law and brothers-in-law, and to all who are grieving at this time and feeling the great absence of their sister, mother, grandmother. She has now gone to join and to be united once again with our deceased husband, Tony. And she will also be joining her parents, Evelyn and Michael. And we will be remembering Tony and all her close deceased ones in our Mass, in our prayer this morning. As we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We come to remember her, yes, but more important, we come to speed her on our way back to her Creator. We ask the Lord that we may be worthy to enter into this Mass and that our prayers on her behalf will be heard. Lord Jesus, you heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Monica, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So now I invite Anthony and Michael to come forward and give us the reading. A reading from the book of Sirach. When one finds a faithful friend, his value is far beyond gold. He is clothed with strength and dignity, and he laughs at the days to come. A faithful friend is a sturdy shelter, he who finds a treasure. A faithful friend is beyond price, no sum can balance his worth. Let your acquaintances be many, but once in a thousand, your faithful friend. For he who loves his friends behaves accordingly, and his friends will be like himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading on behalf of the first letter of St. John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know this is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever, and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you a rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. In the Gospel of the Lord is to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Be seated a few moments. Undoubtedly, we come here this morning with very, very heavy hearts. To return to God, the sole and mortal remains of Monica, Monica Tai, who has gone back to her God and to her husband, her late partner, her soulmate, Tony whose month's memory we celebrated this past Sunday. As Monica and Tony never journeyed too far afield in life, they have continued to gravitate towards each other in death. rather than look upon her passing as a double family loss, it is rather having the weight of the sorrow of departure as she goes to meet her other half, Tony, in glory, which is their, both their destiny. We rejoice that they are together again in the peace of God's kingdom. To hang on to life in sorrow and in mourning is not what God wanted for Monica. In the gospel, the Lord invites her back to himself. Her days as postmistress career have been fulfilled. She no longer has to contend with the rupture of separation from her beloved husband to burden her any longer. Rather, 
She has answered the call of the gospel, which reads, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Overburdened from illness, grief and loss. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. And you will find rest for your souls, because my yoke is easy and my burden light. The God she believed in is a God of compassion and love one who has prepared a place for her and has made and has already made community to meet her led by her late husband Tony and also to meet again with her own beloved parents Evelyn and Michael and also all the other many good friends she made in this earth who have gone before her, especially those she encountered as postmistress in her rounds between around here and Navan. As she maintained close connections with the numerous clients and friends on earth, those bonds are strengthened with those who are wait for arrival in God's kingdom. That is the essence of our faith in the resurrection. That is our perspective on life. Life is but a passage, a journey, a pilgrimage, back to the hand of the one who put us here and gave us life. Those who live with Christ on earth live closer to him when he invites him when he invites us back to himself monica that name is called after the famous saint monica mother of saint augustine of the early church. It joins her in the great tradition of saintly women who care for their children in life unto death. In the confessions of the great Saint Augustine, Saint Augustine is the person the Augustinian orders have been called after. And after his life he wrote his or in, his, in the latter part of his life, he wrote his confessions. And in those confessions, which St. Augustine wrote, he credits his mother, St. Monica, with his conversion from a life of waywardness and delinquency through her tears, her example, and her prayers. Likewise, those members of the Thai family can rely on the merits of their mother's saintliness, her prayers, her spirituality, to keep all of them, all of you, on the straight and narrow path. And through your family difficulties, through the family challenges, through adversity, because as she looked after you in life, she is certainly going to look after you in death. Monica's quiet life was spent in performing her duties to God and to her family, and continues now with her new life in Christ. Her cares, her concerns, for her nearest and dearest is not going to be forgotten when she passes back to her creator. 
the person who serves so quietly in our midst while on earth will equally be a strong advocate with God in heaven. Her family haven't lost a mother, they've gained a great, a strong advocate with her God in heaven. And she will be closer to them than ever in their needs, in their struggles, in their challenges of life. I have a little reflection here on mourning for lost parents. There are different ways we can address loss. When both parents die, you can shed tears because they are gone. Or you can smile because they lived. You can close your eyes and pray that they will come back. Or you can open your eyes and see all that they have left behind you for you to take up and to bring to completion. Your hearts can be empty because you can't see them anymore. Or your hearts can be full of love which you received from them. You can turn your back on tomorrow and live yesterday or you can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. You can remember them only because they're gone or you can cherish their memory and allow it to regenerate the present. You can close your minds, be empty and turn your back or you can do what they'd want you to do. Open your eyes, love, nurture the young ones, shape them according to the values of Monica and Tony. And that will be your greatest gift to them, to ensure that their values are lived out in the lives of your own young ones. May she enjoy the rewards of her labour, and may she rest in peace. Amen. Now I'd like to call on Daryl, Gronya, Abigail, Michael, Edel and Stephen to come up and offer their prayers on behalf of our late sister Monica. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in our midst today. We know that you as a loving God hear and know the weight of loss that bears heavily on the Thai family this morning. We know that you are there to hear us in our needs and to answer our prayers. We pray for our young people. May we, sh may we shine our truth into their hearts and show them the gentleness of our love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our parents, families and friends. May God continue to bless and protect them in their daily lives. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, we pray for all who are sick. May you hold them in your healing presence along with our family and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those that nurse Monica throughout her illness. May they be rewarded for their gentleness and care. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We 
We pray for all who mourn Monica today, that they will receive the strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who have loved, who we have loved who have died. May they enjoy the promise of eternal happiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we entrust those prayers into your hands through the intercession of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now could I invite Maeve Carlin and Catherine Carey to come forward and bring the gifts up for the Mass, the gifts which are offered on behalf of the late Monica. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Monica, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of, of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may be your loving gift, be for, by through your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. To truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, 
you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we've brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. In song, let us proclaim the mystery of faith. He is Lord, he is Lord, he is risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of, his saving passion, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Granted we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Monica, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family you have gathered here before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Monica, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth you will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you on their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory 
when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray together in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Prayer of peace. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In the silence of our hearts, let us offer each other Christ's gift of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, it is he who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christic Minister Maury, free to help or here.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant, strengthened by it, our sister Monica may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Before we go to the final commendation, I'd just like to thank all who participated in the liturgy, the readers, those who made the prayers, our musicians, those who brought up the relics and the gifts. It's important that we all participate in the final and sending off of our sister. And I thank you all who have prepared for it so well. Also, of course, our funeral directors who have done the background preparation. So now we will go to the final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Monica. May our farewell express our affection for her. May these our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully meet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even even death itself. Your response is, receive her soul and present it to God the Most High. Receive her soul and to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Response, soul and to God the Most High. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Response, receive her soul and present it to God the Most High. Eternal grace grant unto her, O Lord, and may perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present it to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our sister Monica. 
in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. In the sight of the world, she is now no more. In your sight, may she live forever. Forgive whatever sin she committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant her everlasting peace. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. In peace. Let us take our sister to her place of rest. So 